So today's video is, in my opinion, everything you need to know before purchasing a Peloton. Is it worth it? What is my experience? Do I recommend it? Are there alternatives? What are some factors to consider before purchasing? I will address all of these questions and more in today's video. Today's video will be broken down into the following topic areas. I will list all the timestamps in the description box down below. But first, before we get started, here's a bit of background on myself. I've owned the Peloton for almost a year after receiving it in January of 2020. Luckily, I purchased it before the pandemic started because for me, the ship time was within two weeks of ordering. With current times, it can take up to 10 to 12 weeks for delivery. 25 to 90, resistance 30 to 40. Three weeks into owning it, I uploaded my first Peloton review video. And from there, my YouTube channel evolved into a fitness slash lifestyle channel. I've since made Peloton update videos as well as covering other topics in the indoor at home fitness space. So why consider Peloton? For one, you're receiving a quality product. It has a sturdy welded steel frame. The bike itself weighs 125 pounds and the tablet weighs 10 pounds. So that's a total of 135 pounds for the bike. I also love Peloton for the motivating community and especially if you find a favorite instructor, which it's not hard to find one. You can count on them to consistently be there, motivating you through your workout as Peloton puts out new content daily. Peloton has thousands of encore or rerun classes available through their app. No pity parties, no excuses. And they always say that the best workout is the one that you actually do. If you're gonna work out, you might as well do something that you love, not something that you hate, and that should be a no-brainer. Periodically, they will go through a purge and delete some of the older classes, which can be quite upsetting for their fans if you visit any of their Peloton fan Facebook groups. Peloton currently has two bike options, the original bike and the bike plus. The original bike retails for $1,895, it can also be financed for $49 per month for 39 months with 0% APR. Peloton also has a Bike Plus with a retail price of $2,495. It can be financed for $64 per month for 39 months for 0% APR. If you're looking to save a little bit of money, I would recommend the original bike because that is 75% the price of the Bike Plus. The main differences between the original bike and the Bike Plus is that the Bike Plus has a swivel screen, it has upgraded speakers, and it has the ability for your Apple Watch metrics to sync onto your bike screen through the use of Apple's Gym Kit. Peloton also has two treadmill options as well if you're not into biking. They have the Tread Plus, which has a retail price of $4,295. It can be financed for $111 for 39 months for 0% APR. They also have a less expensive tread option that is coming soon within the next few months. It has a retail price of $2,495, which can also be financed for $64 per month for 39 months for 0% APR. Now let's talk a little bit about the Peloton membership. I agree that it's a little bit backwards because for those that own a Peloton product, they have to pay $39 per month for their monthly membership. This contrasts with those that don't own a Peloton product and if you just wanna purchase the app by itself, it's only $12.99 per month. There has been quite a bit of dissertation online with people complaining about that fact. And the main difference between the two is that those with the Peloton products can compete in their leaderboard system during the rides. The leaderboard system is something that ranks you with everyone who's currently doing the ride as well as all the lifetime riders. Some of the Peloton classes can rack up over 100,000 all-time members. That's a lot of people taking a particular class. If you're interested in trying the Peloton app for yourself, now is a great time because currently they are offering two months free. Usually it's a 30-day free trial. They will send you a reminder seven days before your trial ends to notify you if you want to cancel or continue your trial. On the Peloton app, there's a variety of workout types that you can take in the categories of running, cycling, strength, yoga, meditation, and more. Spending $39 per month on the Peloton membership may seem pricey, but consider if you were to pay for a gym membership elsewhere. Usually, gym memberships are a minimum of $50 per month. 
For those who may be interested in the payment plans for the bike, they start for as little as $49 per month for the original bike. If you combine that with a Peloton membership of $39 per month, that brings you to $90 per month, which is still less than certain gym memberships. This is not even considering the fact that many gyms are closed down right now and we don't know when they will reopen. Also, consider if you were to ride the Peloton four times a week or 16 times per month at a price of $34 per class at SoulCycle, that would have equated to $544 per month. That is 14 times more expensive than Peloton's membership of $39 per month. Now, what to expect when you order a Peloton? So initially the delivery time was within two to four weeks, but because of recent times, it can take up to 10 to 12 weeks. It just depends on the area that you live in. Your bike will arrive with a white glove setup. During the time that I ordered it in January of 2020, they brought it inside my house, took it to my second story, and set the bike up, adjusted it to suit me, and they also helped attach the cleats to my shoes, which took an average of 10 minutes for both shoes. I would recommend that you create a username slash login ahead of time, just so when they are here with your appointment, you can get it rolling. You can have multiple usernames under a single account, one for every person in your household. So for my bike, I have three users on it, myself, my mom, and my husband. My name is Kirby Rigsby, who's on the right, also controlled by the knob on the bike. And for a quick side note, after completing your first 100 rides, you will receive a celebratory Century Club t-shirt direct from Peloton in the mail, one for every member in your household that qualifies. They will send it to you automatically, you don't need to email and remind them. Upon delivery of your bike, that's when you'll start the $39 per month membership. I also recommend that you purchase an equipment mat ahead of time before your bike delivery, just so when the bike arrives, you have something to place it on. The bike has dimensions of two feet by four feet, so any mat with those dimensions should be satisfactory. So what are some Peloton bike alternatives? I have a whole separate video detailing my top indoor cycling bike options that are Peloton alternatives, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. But for right off the bat, a direct comparison would be the Nordic Track Studio Cycle S22i bike and the Echelon EX5 bike. If you have a Costco membership, I would recommend that you check out their Echelon bike offering as it's available in stores and I believe online for under $1,000. As it turns out, this bike is $999 in store, but if you purchase it online, you have to pay $600 more to account for the delivery fee. The Costco price also includes a one-year membership to their classes, which typically would have been $39 per month. Both the Nordic Track and the Echelon bike, as I mentioned, do have an included tablet, so that kind of mirrors the Peloton. You will have to pay for those particular memberships, so if you're looking to use the Peloton app on a non-Peloton bike, I would recommend a few of these budget options. A few brands include Yosuda, Sunny Health and Fitness, these bikes are available in the $600 and less price range. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about my fitness results with the Peloton. At the three week mark, I had noticed that I lost eight pounds and I was more toned. At the six month mark, I lost a total of 10 pounds and once again, I was more toned and I found that I had better endurance on the bike. Typically, I had started with 30 minute workouts, but I was able to bump it up to 45 minute workouts every now and then. At the one year mark, which is where I'm at right now, I haven't lost any more weight. I would say that I've maintained and hopefully gotten more toned and I do have better endurance. I'm not sore after every ride anymore. I will say that during the first few rides, I found the seat to be quite uncomfortable, but I did get used to it and now I don't think anything of it. The padded seat cover option I recommend is from the brand Mark. It's available on Amazon for $15. So now for a few frequently asked questions I've received over the year of owning my Peloton, the first one I get a lot is, do you get bigger thighs when doing the Peloton? As you may know, the quads are one of the biggest muscles of your body and it's a no brainer that you use them a ton during the rides. For me, I haven't noticed that they've gotten bigger, they've just gotten more toned. I'd also like to mention that my core has become more toned, especially from doing the standing portion of the bike rides. Traditionally speaking, if one were to think about exercising on a bike, you may not think about standing up. But actually, the standing up or out of the saddle portions are one of the best ways, I find, that gets my heart rate up. I do find that my arms are more toned, especially from taking Cody Rigsby's intervals and arms classes, in which it's a mix of biking and arm exercises. 
The arm portion is generally in a five minute segment and they focus on the shoulders, biceps, triceps, and chest. My biking frequency is generally speaking three to four times per week at 30 minutes per session. Peloton has cycling classes for as little as 15 minutes, so really you can fit it into any schedule. This, of course, excludes the five minute warm up and cool down rides. For the days that I really don't feel like doing a workout, oftentimes if I just turn on my bike and scroll to a 15 minute class, I'm able to do it. Even if I'm not doing full effort, something is better than nothing. Peloton also has a referral program in which you can share your unique referral code with friends and family, and at the time of order, they can receive $100 off Peloton accessories. Peloton accessories include any of their apparel items, their shoes, their workout mats, their weights, etc. Once a friend or family member uses your code, in return, you also get $100 off accessories as well. So that is also part of a reason why those who own a Peloton wear a lot of their apparel. A lot of it could be purchased through the referral credits. You can share up to 12 referral codes per year. It's reset every January 1st. Peloton is quite picky about you only sharing the code with friends and family members. You can't post it onto online sites or in public places. For example, you may see a bunch of referral codes in the YouTube comments, which are actually not allowed. If Peloton finds out, they can suspend your referral code for the year. If you don't want to risk suspension for this program, it is better if you share the code privately. For any prospective Peloton buyers, I'd recommend that you email or contact those who own a Peloton and ask if they have any additional codes to share. So this is my Peloton bike setup over here. I have it in my master bedroom. Here is where you can store the weights as well as your shoes. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bike setup and all the adjustments that can be made. For reference, I'm five foot four and these adjustments are suitable for my height. So there's three adjustments on the back of the bike. You can adjust this portion, angling it upwards or downwards. You can adjust the seat forwards or backwards, and you can also adjust the height up and down. So as mentioned, my seat is adjusted all the way forward. To adjust the seat forward and back, you just tilt this lever right here and it will shift. Let me take down the weights. There we go. It's from A all the way till J. The seat height can also be angled. There's this little knob right here that you can twist and you can angle it upwards or downwards. I just have my seat pretty parallel to the floor. For the saddle, it should rest at the top of your hip bone, wherever you deem that to be. You don't want it too low and you don't want it too high. You can get compression injuries if the saddle height is too low and you can also overextend yourself if it's too high. And here we can adjust the height of the seat. Use this lever right here and go all the way down and up. I have my seat set to 11 and once again, I'm 5'4". The handlebars can also be adjusted up and down. This is where the handlebar comes to on me. The bike has two water bottle holders. I always have one of these giant 32 ounce water bottles just so I'm able to chug water during the rides. And if we're being honest, I do have coffee in the other water bottle holder typically during most of the rides. The first thing I wanna mention is that clipping in can be a little bit challenging, especially if it's your first time. I would say I got the hang of it after my third ride. It just takes practice. Also, don't be embarrassed if you're one of those people that leaves your bike shoes attached to the pedals. Numerous people on the Peloton Facebook group have mentioned that they do that and there's nothing to be ashamed about. So now for clipping in and out of the bike, typically I start with my right leg first. So this is the cleat portion of the shoe. We're gonna angle it over the pedal. I use the tip of the shoe to kind of kick the pedal into a straight position. I angle my foot down and I just press. And once you hear the click sound, that means your foot is attached. From there, I swing my left foot over the saddle. I do the same thing. I hover my foot over the pedal, put it in a parallel position and just press down. And you can see both shoes are attached. To get out of the bike, I just press down on this knob right here, which will lock everything into place. I start with my left foot first. I rotate it towards the left side and it will pop out. I swing the leg over and do the same with my right foot, angle it towards the left and it will pop out. When you angle it, you wanna make sure that it's parallel to the ground so this is the wear and tear on the toe pedals after a year. I have the Peloton shoes, which come with the cleats. They're just attached by these three points right here. 
The bottom of the shoe is a hardened plastic material. I have these shoes in the size 39. Typically, I'm a size seven and a half and I sized up, so I guess these would be considered a size eight. If you were to purchase a different brand shoe, say on Amazon, you will have to purchase a cleat separately. The cleats are quite inexpensive, ranging from $15 to $20, and the shoes you can get for an average of $80 on Amazon. Here's an example of a non-Peloton branded shoe. This is from the brand Gavin, and these are what the cleats look like once they're installed on the bottom of the shoe. I also want to mention that when you install your cleats onto your shoes, you want to have a degree of float, which is the amount of lateral rotation. Ideally, you want a slight float on your cleats so that when you're pedaling, your knee has some leeway left and right. You don't want to be 100% facing forward because that's uncomfortable and unnatural. Also, having a degree of float helps with clipping in and clipping out as you have to rotate your foot to be able to do so. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about bike apparel and accessories, so what do I normally wear to ride? Personally for me, I ride in shorts and a sports bra. A lot of times it is a Peloton sports bra. I feel the liberty and comfort to do so, and honestly, that is the beauty of having an at-home, indoor workout machine. If you find the bike seat to be uncomfortable, as I mentioned before, you can put a seat cover, but padded bike shorts do exist for a reason, but traditionally they're reserved for road bikes, but there's no judgment there if you want to feel comfortable. For those of you who like to track your fitness metrics, I would recommend having a heart rate monitor or your Apple Watch if you have one. If you want to cast your metrics onto the bike screen, there is a product that can do that for you. I've been using WatchLink, which links via Bluetooth your Apple Watch to your Peloton, displaying your heart rate onto the bike. So this is the WatchLink receiver. There's a 3M sticky hook so you can attach this to your bike. I open on my Apple Watch the cycling app, and here you can say that it's connected, and you can select stationary cycling, and this metric will sync onto the screen. So as mentioned, here is where the heart rate displays on the screen. And when you're done with the workout, you just press end. The new Bike Plus has this feature built into it via Apple's gym kit, but the original bike doesn't have that. A few other accessories to consider that are definitely not needs, but are nice to have include, for one, a tower fan that you can point directly towards you during your ride. For me, I find that drastically increases my comfort level. The worst thing that you can do is not push yourself during the ride because you're too hot, sweaty, and uncomfortable. So this tower fan can quickly alleviate that problem. Another thing to consider is perhaps getting a laptop table for your bike if you're planning to do more casual rides or even some of the scenic rides. Personally for me, I'd rather just focus on the workout and not multitask too much. I wanna be as efficient as possible doing a certain task. But those laptop tables definitely exist. Another thing that we all have on hand is headphones, especially if you want more of like a surround sound experience. Oftentimes I'll just ride using my Apple AirPods. I recently reviewed a pair of earbuds that are 30% the price of Apple's AirPods Pro, so if you're looking for a bit of a deal, feel free to check out that video. I do have a 10% off coupon code if you purchase these earbuds through Amazon, the code is MIFO0909. The Peloton speakers aren't bad, but they won't give you that deep bass sound that you can get from certain headphones. Headphones are also great if you have young ones running around and you don't want them to hear certain censored words on songs, but in reality, how many of the workouts are actually censored? I know quite often Cody Rigsby will say that this song has been censored, but in reality it isn't, which I don't mind, but I don't want my young kids to hear it. I've seen some Peloton workout setups online in which they put speakers throughout their workout room to get a full surround sound experience. Some also project their workouts onto a large TV via Chromecast. So yes, that is possible. So anyways, that should do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like this video and comment down below. What are your thoughts? Do you own a Peloton? Are you in the market for an indoor spin bike? Which bike model do you think you would prefer? Have you tried the Peloton app? Yes, I would agree that Peloton is quite hyped up ever since its inception in 2012. It's almost going on eight years. Make sure to subscribe if you like content like this and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.